What's going on, Assassins? It's Darkstrider, and we've got some more news and rumors in regards to Assassin's Creed Codename Red. Now, this one's going to be a doozy, so everybody strap in. It's going to be a long one. And uh, some of this stuff I'm actually kind of excited for. But here we go. I'll explain what's going on. So, to start off, first it's rumored to officially be revealed around May or June. I don't know how they're going to do it, but hopefully we'll see some gameplay, an announcement trailer, and uh, just letting us know when it's going to be announced. They are saying that it should be uh, launched around October or November of this year, which I've been saying since the beginning, so let's see what happens. Uh, the series is not going to be in that rumored infinity portal and that just sounded confusing to begin with the way it initially sounded was like they were going to have some kind of private launcher that would operate the entire series including past games in other words you couldn't run any game except through this launcher well you know that's done and over it may also be a game of the year contender from what i'm hearing the devs are putting a lot of muscle into this project it's making use of lines of ray trace, global illumination, virtual geometry. This is going to cause graphics like we've never seen in any Assassin's Creed title. This is going to cause a major overhaul in CGI, weather instances, parkour, and in-game animations. This might explain why it's been in development for so long and why other titles like Codename Hex and Jade have been kind of delayed. I guess they're kind of working on technical leaps, honestly. Red will be slightly like Valhalla as far as combat goes. However, they're threatening us with a good time. They're going to include more blood, gore, and decapitations. Uh, they're also looking to make it different as well. Stealth is going to be a majorly important factor in this game, unlike the hack and slash of like Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. In fact, you're going to be extinguishing torches to hide in shadows, go prone and sneak through bushes of tall grass, and hide bodies. You're going to be able to do all that, which, I mean, that gives us more of the assassin feel, you know? Now, where the game is going to start to scare me is going to be in the mechanics. I'm worried that the game is going to be too similar to games like Sekiro, Rise of the Ronin, and especially Ghost of Tsushima. You'll be able to choose different stances like in Ghost. You'll be using grappling hooks and tools similar to that franchise as well, as well as other franchises that have a samurai or ninja aesthetic. Uh, you know, so that kind of worries me. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are some differences that they're mixing in. As I've covered in a previous video, we know that there's going to be two protagonists, a male lead and a female lead, with you playing about 60% as the male and 40% as the female. The start of each of their stories will see them as enemies initially, but then they ally against the common and greater enemy. I wonder who that is. The male is based on real-life story of Yasuke, an African trained to be a samurai. He's supposed to have been a slave on a slave ship, which was headed to a currently unknown destination with his lover among other slaves. Another ship attacks and kills all aboard, or so they thought, as he's the sole survivor. He's rescued, and he's brought to Japan where he learns the way of the samurai and is under the service of Nobunaga. Besides being a samurai, he's also studied the way of the sumo wrestler, so this should make his combat skills very interesting. The female lead is going to be a female shinobi named Noi Fujibayashi, daughter of the real-life legend Fujibayashi Nagato. She'll play more agile and stealthier than the male, and she'll be able to use smoke bombs, bells, shuriken, and her weapon of choice is going to be the kunai. Obviously, certain events of real-life history, events and historical figures, are going to be altered to go with the narrative of the game. So once again, I ask all of you who play the Assassin's Creed series for the history to keep that in mind. Stop. Get some help. It's just a game. The map is going to be allegedly larger than Valhalla, yet smaller than Odyssey, and there's going to be a lot less markers on the map for you to follow. This means that you'll have a lot of exploring to do if you want to find certain things in the game or hope to find hidden areas. It doesn't mean that there's going to be less to do, though. They're just not going to clutter the map. Now, 
the real exciting part is that there's going to be a settlement mode similar to Valhalla, but different enough to be kind of interesting. It's going to be more of a hideout than a settlement, and it's going to have some features that make me think that it's going to turn previous systems on its ear, but it also worries me that it's going to be a microtransaction trap. So let me explain. You can build structures as you please, so long as you have the materials to build it, just like in Valhalla. However, you won't build on exact spots or, you know, make the buildings bigger like in Valhalla by increasing its level. Instead, let's say you want to build a smithy, you get to choose where the structure goes and what the outside looks like, the interior, the floor, the roof, uh, what gear you want displayed. So there's a lot of innovation in this so you could see why i'm a little nervous you know like i'd hate to see cool gear building materials and designs hidden behind a paywall but this is actually a game changer it's kind of wild to me honestly other rumors that have yet to be confirmed include red being the last action rpg style game that we got from origins odyssey and valhalla it's entirely possible that future games will play more like Mirage, possibly with larger maps and, you know, like it'll be a lengthy game, but it just it will not be an RPG style. You won't have to grind anything out, which is pretty wild. And uh, honestly, that's welcome. A lot of people are sick of the grind. There's also the rumor that we're not going to have a Retta or Sargon style of shop. Like in Origins, Rota gave you an opportunity to get an epic or legendary item each night, or you could spend 3,000 drachme on a hecachest at the shop and gamble at getting a legendary or epic item. Of course, they recently removed that ability. You all know why. Odyssey gave us the opportunity to trade ore that we found on the map or got from specific quests for epic and legendary gear that was switched out every week or we could gamble on olympian gifts which gave us legendary or epic items as well and then valhalla gave us another weekly system where we could trade opal for store items that retta had selected there are also daily items that you can purchase but long gone is the system of gambling you can't trade opal in hopes of getting a random item also they made it hella hard to find or get opal Red will apparently just not allow you to do any of this at all, which is kind of sad because honestly, this was a really good way for those who didn't want to spend money on Helix credits to actually be able to go in and get those premium items pretty much for free, you know, or at least they pay in their time and their patience for collecting all of the uh, items, all of the opal or or what have you, you know. Uh, there's also a rumor that we're going to be getting more naval combat, although I don't know quite how that fits into this game. As far as I understand it, it surrounds Japan. Naval battles around the islands is possible, but odd to me. Maybe in future DLCs you go to like mainland China and that's where they get the naval battles from? I'm not sure, but they have a whole team working on a naval battle module, so... We'll see what happens. Maybe they don't even, you know, rock with a giant ship. Maybe it's kind of like a boat or something. Um, another exciting rumor is that they're talking of support like they claimed with Odyssey, but they actually did with Valhalla. Now, I'd like to see more of what they did in Valhalla. I appreciated all the festivals, the extra quests, and the modules that they dropped. Tombs of the Fallen, Forgotten Sava, River Raids, and the Mastery Challenges were fun, tedious, grindy, but they gave us stuff to do while we waited for updates. In fact, it's believed that the support content will coexist with Assassin's Creed codename Hex. So while you're playing with Hex and you wait for updates or DLCs there, Red will retain its share of replayability or just playability as you're given some cool content to play constant. So, in closing, this is a lot to take in. There's lots of cool things to look forward to, some interesting design choices, and some very cool ideas. I'm excited for the hideout system, the story, and the combat. It sounds like it's going to be a wild ride altogether. However, uh, there definitely will be bugs day one. It's Ubisoft after all. But hopefully we can find a few exploits that boost your gaming before the glitches come. And hopefully they don't have any game-breaking glitches like day one, like Valhalla had. 
Uh, you know, like, I, I'll still never forget live streaming at midnight EST. And a viewer asked me how I got past the gender selection screen. That was absolutely crazy. Uh, what does worry me, uh, above all else, is Ubisoft not listening to the fan base. We waited three years for hooded combat in Valhalla, had glitches that weren't fixed ever, and we were promised New Game Plus for three years. New Game Plus was a horrible offense because they kept giving us excuse after excuse and no actual reason as to why they couldn't give it to us at all. To this day, in fact. Uh, you know, that that's my concerns. I knew they weren't going to give us New Game Plus, though, because it, it was just too much of a mess, in my opinion, as far as the bugs went. But, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Does any of this entice you? Are you more excited for Red now? Do you want to hear more about certain things or need clarification on anything? You know, ask the question and I'll try to clarify. I'll, I'll you know, most likely somebody else has the same question. Uh, you know, are, are you burned by Ubisoft and you want to wait until you see live gameplay? Definitely let me know what you think in the comments below and keep it locked here as I'll give you more details as they come in. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It helps this channel out an awful lot. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and until next time, take care, be good, stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Yayi! Yayi!